Welcome back to Slothbox. I'm Lyndon Dixon, joined today by Kieran Gaffin. Kieran, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm ground, man. I'm doing ground. Good, perfect. I want to go right back to the start, mate. How did you first get into boxing? Uh, it actually, boxing has been in my family for um, about five generations, to be honest. Uh, my brother was the reason I really started boxing, though. Um, I... Um, I, I'd always been in and around gym since I was a kid, but I never had real interest in it. And my uh, my brother went down the gym and I'd uh, travel with a couple of travellers down there. And I went down thinking I'd be the big brother and fix them. But uh, I couldn't couldn't have done anything really. I was a chubby little kid. But uh, yeah, well, I, I carried on and uh, you went into coaching and I went into fighting. Mm. Well, you say you went into fighting. I just wondered, did you have much amateur experience? And if you did, how did how did the amateurs go? Yeah, I was a uh, national captain of the Welsh team for two years. Um, won uh, won won five five titles for uh, five Welsh titles. Competed all all throughout Europe. Won a few different medals. So yeah, done 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 enough. Yeah, it sounds like you did all right. Um, but nonetheless, you made your debut in 2016 against I think Kevin McCauley. Even though it was a draw, how did the night go for you? Because you only get that debut once. Yeah, it was it shit really underwhelming. Went home with no money in my pocket, mm. and uh, and uh, brought you know thirty forty people over to Western Supermare, which you know was a track for me on a couple of weeks notice. And uh, yeah, it was his hundred fiftieth fight, so it felt like they gave him a bit of a gimme, to be honest. Mm. Um, well, he you know gave him a bit of an easier easier decision because I didn't think it was a draw. To, you know, Kevin's a great guy, and you know we had a rematch a couple of months, yeah, year, well, a year or so later or whatever, um, in Pontypool and done the job there. But yeah, first, to, to be honest with you, my record doesn't tell you the truth, like. Mm. But fast forward now, talking of that record, you've had fifteen fights, you've won eleven, drew two, and lost two, but you've also been Welsh champion in that time. I just wondered if you could tell me what the journey's been like. Are you happy with it? Are you? How would you sum up that journey so far in boxing? Yeah, I mean, I've done any, any everything you, you'd you want to do setting out as a pro. I've headlined Sky Sports. I've won, won the title belt. I've defended it. Um, uh, I, You know, this is my first time promoting. I'm promoting my own show. Uh, I've, I've helped boxers. I've written a book. It's, you know, I've, I've done it all so far, you know. So I, mm -hmm. I just want to do better now. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that there, you're fighting on Thursday, and not only are you fighting, you're promoting your show as well. I just wondered if you could tell me how that come around. Yeah, um, about oh, four years ago, um, two days after my daughter was born, I had a fight in Tlandarsi, Swansea, and the um, the promoter there is Mo Pryor, who is now my manager as well. And uh, a lot of people came up to him from Abergavenny at the show at the at the after party of the show, and um and said you know we we're interested in seeing boxing down down our way when's that going to happen? So Mo's been really keen to work with me and get help me get a show on since then, and you know it's, it, he's the he's the head promoter of it if you like, um and I've been able to draw his experience on his experience helping him to organise it and. It's been great, you know, with with Shadow Box is the company, uh the name of the promotion, which is me, Mo and, and, and another partner. And um yeah, we're uh, we're hopefully gonna run a couple more, uh not just in Abergavenny. We're planning another two in Abergavenny this year, but also in Swansea and Mo's obviously still doing his stuff in London as well. So it's good to be a part of that side of it. And I've always been someone who wanted to take control, you know, and uh yeah. I uh, I want to give control as well. There's a uh, a lot of guys out there who get kept in the dark by the so-called managers and promoters, and mm. the realistic side of it is we do it all ourselves anyway, from selling our own tickets and sometimes arranging our own fights, which will happen to me a lot. So yeah, but talking of that fight on first day, it was supposed to be against Sion Yaxley, but after a late change mm. of fighting, now Paul Cummins. Are you happy yeah. with the opponent on first night? Like, what what happened there with the opponent change? Yes. So the top and bottom of it is um, Sean and his manager, great to work with, um, took the fight like that on the condition that um, we got a Celtic title for it. 
mm. and uh, me being naive i didn't take into account how difficult some 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 things can be and uh, mm. uh for whatever reason the board decided they did not to give it sanction uh sean's 12 and 0 and i'm the you know i won a welsh title and defended it and i'm the only person to do that in like the last 10 years as well um but for whatever reason they've decided not to sanction it uh so that fight's been put on pause now it's not not out the window by all means we're, we're both really keen to hit each other um <laughs> he's a lovely guy sean is and uh he won two national titles after i turned over pro in the in the in the division we both competed in so you know it's been uh a, a, almost a long one brewing if you like yeah yeah it's He's twelve and zero. Um, I've got eleven wins there. We're, we're pretty even on that. And uh, like I say, I've I've got the titles that he wants to be using to to springboard himself now. Uh, further on, and very happily, we're in talks now with uh, a sanctioning body that's gonna give us a t- hopefully give us a title for the next date. Um, that's even better than the one we were gonna compete for. So, yeah, we're uh, just holding holding our fingers. Tightly, tightly crossed to uh, hopefully get him, uh, them over the line for the June show. But the one, the show we have, I ideally lined up in June. I've got two or three fights now, you know, you know, softly penciled in, and they are bangers, man. Everyone's gonna be ringing about. Them. I, I can't wait to to do the interviews and do the rounds on that one. You know, you're uh, instead of me me messaging them, they're all gonna be messaging me. Exactly, but um, nonetheless, you are still fighting on Thursday. How's camp been for that yeah. one? Yep, yeah, uh, fantastic. I've had I've had sparring with um top amateurs. I've had sparring with you know really covering top top pros to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, uh, another guy I, I sparred with recently who's on the card, Mark Davis. He's got like telescopic arms. He's he's fantastic. He's what he's a hell of a boxer, and uh, he's having his second fight on the card. Um, Ethan George, who I've sparred before previously, and we we would maybe be in tentative talks to have a, have a bout to get as well. At point. He's on the card. He's boxing a uh a two time Iranian champion of the amateurs. Uh, so that's going to be a, a an interesting contest for him. As he steps up now further, and then we got uh, Lewis Roberts, a bantamweight, who uh. Who comes to the ring with a mariachi band and a big sombrero? So it's going to be a a, a good good night to watch his uh, his crowd uh, take over the place as well. And you know, just for four fights, it, it really is great. And mine, um, we 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 you know we managed to get a sanction for uh, Celtic Nations title, which is an eight round belt. Mm. Um, and uh, Paul was fantastic enough to step in place for that, uh, because it was really proving up for us to find a replacement for Sean. Um, and like I say. Paul stepped up to the plate like the the absolute warrior that he is, and hopefully we'll have a nice eight round battle, and everyone can enjoy it. And with with the with the right uh, the right technique and the right decision, I'll be coming on with another belt on Thursday. Well, providing you get that win on Thursday, what's the plan for you for the rest of the year? Because obviously you could have your own promotional shows, but in terms of you and your boxing career, what's the plan for the rest? What what do you aim to do by the end of the year? Yeah, so by um in in June, me and Sean will be taking that um taking that hopefully the next step now into a, a bigger bigger title and you know really get get a, a good belt um is going to be ideally on the line and maybe even if we get a uh, a sanction for a British title eliminator would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Josh Kelly's plans are to. Uh, vacate or not on there but it'd be great to maybe get a chance of that British title myself mm-hmm. and um, the the third show we've got lined up in Abergavenny is uh, oh it's gonna it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna feel like uh, feeling on fireball hopefully mm-hmm. um, the Irish things we're, we're adding it ideally we're adding it onto a an existing festival over over here already so it's um just just really exciting and mm. it might be my last year in boxing personally uh to actually compete in because i've got different uh different things that i've got to get on with and um but it won't be my last year in boxing obviously that's the idea of setting up these promotions and building a couple of guys up that'll sell tickets in the area and uh and interest everyone in the area as well and not only that i want to take i'm, I'm ambitious and always have been i want to take a step onto the next stage as well you know with um broadcasters and things 
and that's where we were going to be working to. Mm, well, elsewhere in boxing, news broke today about Amir Khan. I'm sure you've seen it. That crazy stuff. I mean, in supposedly, well, not supposedly, he has tested positive for a banned substance and he's now halfway through his two-year ban. But that's the thing. He's halfway through a ban that got announced today. That's two years on. What do you make it? What do you make of it all? And do you think it's tarnished his legacy? Yeah, it's all a load of shit, isn't it? Yeah. They're all fucking on it, mate. It, it, top level, they're all on it. Connor Ben, look at him. It's, you know, if you're making that kind of money, no one wants to risk losing that kind of money, and it's understandable. It's human nature. But you look at Hollyfield, you know, he, he was juicing. There's no doubt about it. And uh, it's not going to tarnish his legacy. When you Canelo, you look back on it, no one's going to give a fuck, um, mm. which is the sad part about it, really. Uh, and all it's going to take is is that that time someone dies, and mm. that that is going to that's the way it's going to be. People are intelligent enough, or they know enough about it now, when to cycle and when not to, and mm. the the odd person I guess caught out with it, like you, uh, like Ben has been. Um, well, maybe he suffers, you know. Hopefully, the uh, the everyone sticks their ground with it, but when you got Abu Dhabi. Ready to you fucking millions to box out there to box some fucking you know Billy Dip character who, who uh who, who's coming up with five weights. You know it's it's going to happen. Mm. It wouldn't surprise me seeing Prince Patel versus upon a ban out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but in your opinion, what do you think can be done to change it? Because Ben Shalom said that he, even though he's can't promoter, he only found out today through social media as well. Even though the hearing happened. A year ago, what you do you, what do you think? You you, you won't change it. Mm. Yeah, it's just you try and you got to. I say you won't change it. The only way we change it is we all stick together and stick to one 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 set of rules. You know, mm. um, which is why I'm a big believer and, and fan of amateur boxing over pro boxing. Is uh, although they they they've got their own levels of corruption, blowing some professional scandals out of the water mm. at least they've got one body do you know what I mean and yeah. uh, we're really lucky in Wales to have someone like the WABA who are uh, who are actively pushing towards a better sport um, and just just hope you can centralise things uh, I think that's the only way to do it really you know there's early on today I had some conversations with some guys and we were joking about Bieber you know the the, the the British and Irish boxing board was, you know, was stopping them doing anything. You know, mm. television, right? That's that's the one thing separating them from the British boxing board, really, you know. Mm. Uh, um, uh, with legitimacy and uh the, the sport is in a state of ruin, so you just got to enjoy whatever you're doing right now. You mm. know, this is why I'm voting now. I'm putting, I'm trying to put the good fights that I can put on, and hopefully people don't just. Go fanboy on a on a superstar like Canelo and Joshua and Fury. They uh they stick to the the local level and that's the best thing you can do if you really do mm. love boxing. You got to watch your, your Northerners coming through. You got to watch your, your your Welsh fighters coming through in Wales, and uh, hopefully jumping on a bandwagon, little champs like this <laughs> in a couple of years as well. Well, mate, I feel like that's the perfect way to end it. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. I've been doing the Dixon. He's been Kieran Gaffin, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.